بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شروع الله کے نام سے جو رحمان و رحیم ہے اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق پڑھو اے نبی اپنے رب کے نام کے ساتھ جس نے پیدا کیا خلق الانسان من علق جمے ہوئے خون کے ایک لوتھڑے سے انسان کی تخلیق کی اقرأ وربك الاکرم پڑھو اور تمہارا رب بڑا کریم ہے الذي علم بالقلم جس نے قلم کے ذریعے سے علم سکھایا علم الانسان ما لم يعلم انسان کو وہ علم دیا جسے وہ نہ جانتا تھا السلام علیکم اینڈ گڈ مارننگ دس از دا فرسٹ ویڈیو لیسن اف آ انگلش کلاس فار گریٹ ٹین ٹو ڈے دس از دا سیکنڈ ویک آف دا فرسٹ سیمسٹر فائنل today we are going to read a passage a small passage about an african village well we know that africa is the second largest continent after asia and it consists of more than 35 independent countries so this lesson is about nigeria which is one of the countries in africa we all know that city life is quite different from village life the village life normally is considered as simple there are farms and normally farmers live in villages whereas we know that city life is full of hustle and bustle and there are industries offices businesses in cities so we may be familiar with the village life in our in our own country pakistan so in this lesson we will compare the life of an african village with that of a pakistani village so let me tell you something about uh, african continent in general well and nigeria for example in general so nigeria is largely an agricultural country life in villages we know it uh, in the past it was poor there were farmers living in the in in the villages and uh, in african in nigerian villages normally people live in small houses called huts so in this lesson we'll study what the huts are made up of and uh, you know how they are changing over the period of time secondly another thing we'll study in this lesson is about the uh, the food crops and their cash crops so we'll see what are different kinds of crops which are grown in nigeria and finally we'll get some other insight into the village life of nigeria and we'll see how these villages or the life in these villages is undergoing a change with modern you know advancement in technology and etc so during this lesson we will read the passage and then we will try to comprehend understand and we'll see what are different words which are new to us and which you can obviously make note of during the lesson so with reading comprehension we'll do some exercises on vocabulary uh, we'll see what are the meanings of difficult words and then we'll also discuss the comprehension questions followed by some of the exercises vocabulary exercises and some a little bit of grammar exercises also All right so let us begin with the first uh, paragraph of this lesson i'll read it and then i'll explain it to you an african village after asia africa is the largest continent and it consists of more than 35 independent countries 
Its northern parts have had relations with Europe and Asia for many centuries, but very little was known about other parts till the middle of the 19th century. No wonder it was called the Dark Continent once. So, in this paragraph, the writer tells us that the northern part of Africa, which include the countries like Egypt, Libya, Morocco, and uh, Tunisia, for example, these countries, they've had relations with Europe and Asia, probably trade relations, for example. We all know that this was centuries ago. This trade route called Silk Route was very popular. And this part of North, you know, Africa, the north of Africa, it came on this route. So that's why people in Asia and Europe, they knew about this part. But the Central Africa or Western part was pretty unknown to the civilizations in Asia and, uh, and, and Europe till the middle of the 19th century. So that's one of the reasons it was once called as the Dark Continent because very little was known about it. So a difficult word could be continent it's a large piece of land we know that there are seven continents Asia being the biggest of all then Africa and then other continents include Europe for example South America North America and these are the names of other continents all right so this was about the first paragraph yeah, another word which is used here is century. So we all know century is a period of 100 years. You know, just like if there are, there are 10 centuries, so we call it a decade, for example, of there are 10, of 10 years, for example, that also is called a decade. And 1,000 years, for example, is called millennium. So, for example, we are in the second millennium, which started in year 2000. So, this was just an additional information. Well, in the second paragraph, we'll read the second and we'll see what the writer wants to tell us in second paragraph. The village life anywhere in the world is closely associated with agriculture. So is the village in Nigeria, which is mainly an agricultural country. Nigeria is the largest country of West Africa and is the most thickly populated of all the African countries. Most of its inhabitants are farmers who live in villages. A great part of Nigeria is covered with a dense forest with things out into bush in the north. The bush consists of scattered trees with heavy undergrowth in the form of thick bushes and grass. The farmers' settlements or villages are scattered in the bush where they cultivate the land. Well, so we come to know about Nigeria which is in the west of Africa. Okay, with that part which was once called Dark Continent. Okay, but now, you know, with advancement in travel and you know, in technology, we are in a good position to know about all these villages and these African, West African or Central African countries. So Nigeria is, has, I mean, there are two main uh, characteristics of Nigeria are mentioned here. One, it is the largest country of West Africa. And second, it is the most thickly populated uh, country in the whole of African countries. And just like uh, other, many other African countries, so most of the inhabitants uh, who live in Africa are farmers. So this word inhabitants, it may be new for you. Inhabitants are people who live in some 
place. So we, we can use some other words, for example citizens is another word which we use for people who are living in some area, uh, villagers, uh, village dwellers for example, that is also another word for this. Uh, for some countries for example in, in Australia for example people who are living there in Australia for ages and generations they are called Aborigines okay native is another word for people of some area <clears throat> so most of the inhabitants of uh, Nigeria are farmers and they live in villages now if you imagine you know a village of Pakistan for example so we may have a different picture in Pakistan for example villages you can find concrete houses or you know at the least you know some mud houses uh, very seldom you will see in some villages you will find huts people living in huts but in African villages you know quite long ago I mean maybe a few decades ago people used to live in huts in bush areas because uh, Nigeria is normally I mean it's mainly covered with in dense forest and this dense forest for example it thins out as it moves away into the you know into the surrounding areas so then you'll find the bush area which consists of heavy undergrowth so undergrowth is you know made of small bushes for example and then tall grass and the farmer settlements or the villages are scattered you know throughout that bush area so within that big bush area you'll find the villages or the, or the settlements you know scattered scattered means spread out they are not at one place they are for example far away so you'll find some houses at some place then at a distance you'll find some other houses so these settlements or these villages are scattered throughout the bush area okay well scattered means spread out <coughs> spread out or away from one another so these settlements of villages are scattered means they are spread out they are away from each other now let's move on to third paragraph these villages are different from our villages a Nigerian village may consist of a dozen to about three dozen huts these huts are separated from one another by cultivated patches of land since the huts are not situated close together, there are no streets or lanes. They are joined by bush paths which may lead to another village in the same bush area. So, as I mentioned earlier, their villages in Nigerian villages are different from the, from the villages in Pakistan, in our country. How? They may have only about a dozen to about three dozen. Dozen we know, it's like twelve in number so around 12 to 36 or maximum 40 houses or huts in one village and then these huts are separated from one another by cultivated patches of land patches of land means small pieces of land all right so within those houses i mean there are small patches of cultivated land so they have a small piece of land which probably they use for cultivating their own food now since these huts are far away from each other all right so there are no streets or lanes in between so how they are connected then they are connected they are joined by bush paths which may lead to other villages in the same bush area so instead of having complete streets or roads they used to have these small bush paths right which may lead to another village they will not have they did not have before you know they did not have streets or lanes all right so lane 
lane is a a narrow a narrow way or road a narrow way or road and you know uh, cultivate cultivate means to prepare the land for farming <clears throat> now let's move on to the next paragraph and we'll see what this paragraph is about formerly a farmer's hut was a single room it was built very simply thick branches of trees were stuck in the ground in a large circle these branches were joined at the top and bound firmly together thus a cone shaped room was made the spaces between the branches were filled with straw and the roof was also thatched with a thick layer of straw grass reeds or palm leaves well this was formerly i mean you you need to go a little bit back in time probably a few decades ago when life was pretty simple and their houses their huts were made of simple material so they used to have i mean people or farmers in nigeria they used to have a single room hut which was made in a way that they would you know stick the the branches in a circular shape in the ground and then they would thatch it cover the roof with the uh, with grass and you know uh, reeds and and straw for example and make a cone shape house right and these branches which they stick in the they would stick in the in the ground this these were also filled with with straw to make walls and they would open keep the opening either towards east or west so that the sunlight can can enter so this was before a simple house but now now bigger and better huts are built and more modern building methods and materials are used a farmer's house may now have two or, or more rooms it is built round a compound some of the rooms have four walls and a door opening on to the courtyard while others have only three walls with a veranda this the, the walls are made of wood and are plastered with mud the roof is still thatched with grass reeds or palm leaves some of the houses are circular in shape while others may be square or rectangular so now they they started villages they started using other modern materials right still the houses are simple as compared to the houses in the cities or in our villages for example but definitely they are bigger and better they may have three to four rooms so rooms with four walls for example and a door or three walls and an opening towards a veranda so veranda is like an alley you can say or it's like a, a lounge the modern you know substitute for veranda can be a modern in flats for example and it's like a compound it's no more single room hut now it is built around a compound it is a bit you know advanced uh, you know uh, way of building a house but still you know in villages still it is thatched with grass all right probably uh, is just because electricity hasn't reached some of the some of the villages so this keeps the house cool in summers and warm in winters so that's why they thatch it with grass reeds and palm leaves so palm is actually their their cash crops so we'll study it also so that's why uh, palm leaves are utilized in the making of a roof well about the shape some are circular some are square or rectangular so it's not no more only circular we may have other shapes of the houses as well so the word courtyard is used here courtyard 
is uh, an open area surrounded by walls. My walls. All right. So they have the important part of the house is a courtyard. So we'll see how important is it in the next paragraph. The courtyard of the house is the center of all activities. Women folk work and cook food, and the children play there. They, there is little furniture in the, these houses and these homes. The people sleep on the on mats spread on mud plastered floors. All household pots and pans are earthenware, though tin and aluminium utensils have also found their way into their homes now. Well, courtyard of a house is an important part. It's a center of activities for women folk. They work there and uh, they cook food. There, there are no separate kitchens in the houses. And children, you know, they play in the same area. They play in the courtyard in the house. Well, to our surprise, there's no or little furniture. People live, lead a simple life. They sleep on the mats, which they spread on a mud plastered floor. Uh, their how I mean, their utensils, their you know cookware. They are normal, normally earthenware. So earthenware means it is made up of you know uh, clay. So, but now with the passage of time, obviously tin and aluminium utensils have made its way, made their way to their homes also. They probably started using them. But a few decades ago, they would cook and they would eat in these uh, pots and pans which were made up of clay. <clears throat> so, earthenware, objects made of baked clay. made of baked clay all right so since electricity has not reached these remote villages the bush dwellers still use wood for lighting and heating purposes a large pile of wood is lighted in the middle of the courtyard which gives them light and protects them from cold mosquitoes and wild beasts Rainwater is stored in large ponds during the rainy season and is used for drinking as well as for other needs. So, uh, by the time now, electricity may have reached to the most of the villages, but before when there was no electricity, so uh, it, they needed to use wood to make fire in the house. Now this fire was used for more than one purposes, it was like multi purposes. For example, it would give them heat, I mean for heating purposes, for lighting at night for example, they will use it for light and they would use it as a mosquito repellent also. So you know where there is fire, there is smoke also. So the smoke repels these mosquitoes which are a great threat in African villages. I mean uh, these mosquitoes we all know that they carry uh, you know viruses or bacteria for different diseases malaria for example is caused by or is spread by mosquitoes so this works as a mosquito repellent and as a wild beast repellent also since they are in bush area so this fire also protects them from wild beasts now for rain water is also very useful for them they store their rain water uh, in ponds, reservoirs and they use it for drinking purposes and for other purposes. Well, so close to the farmer's dwelling is a patch of land for growing food crops 
which include plantains, potatoes, yams, groundnuts, and pepper. Usually, women look after the food crops while men tend the cash crops, like oil palms and cocoa trees. The fruit of oil palm is boiled and pressed. It gives oil which is filled in drums and is exported to other countries. Similarly, the fruit of cocoa tree yields beans which are ground into powder from which chocolate is made. Cocoa beans and powder are also a major export of Nigeria. Well, in this paragraph, we are given information about uh, the crops of Nigeria. So, the food crops normally which are used for eating purposes as a food. So, these includes uh, crops like plantains. Plantains are uh, cooking bananas. I mean, the unripe bananas, green bananas, which they use as a vegetable and cook and eat. Unlike in Pakistan, we eat ripe bananas as a fruit. Then potatoes is their, you know, famous food crop. Yams. Yams is also a kind of sweet potato. It is called sweet potato. They boil and eat it. Groundnuts, which are the peanuts. And pepper. These are the popular food crops of uh, Nigeria. Well, their food crops are taken care of by women. So their women, you know, they take care of uh, their food crops. Probably it's just because their farms where they grow these food crops, they are close by, nearby there, or close to their houses. Then their cash crops, which are, which they normally sell and make money, they are too popular uh, these uh, cash crops uh, these include oil palms so they normally boil these oil palm is boiled and pressed and oil is extracted from it and then it is filled in drums and exported exported means it is sold to other countries for you know uh, for a good amount of money and then cocoa cocoa beans we all know it, it they are used for Oh, they are used in the making of chocolate. So this is also a very uh, expensive, you know, expensive crop which they normally turn into powder and then they sell it to other countries for making of chocolate. So these are the, the, the two popular cash crops of Nigeria. Well, the word yield is used here yield so here it is used yeah cocoa trees yields bean as a verb it is used right it means to to produce yield means to produce All right to produce as a verb it means it can also be used as a noun yield for example the annual yield means production right but here in this in this paragraph it is used as a as a verb well then one thing that is common in our villages and which is which we shall miss in an african village is the cattle in many parts of africa farmers cannot rear cattle on account of a kind of fly whose sting kills the cattle and causes sleeping sickness among human beings in the absence of cattle, the farmer has to plow the little fields and with his hands carry loads to the market and walk along distance, walk long distances. He may, however, keep a goat for milk and poultry for eggs. So this is, you'll find African villages, you'll not find many farmers keeping cattle. <clears throat> it's just because there is a fly, there is an insect there which stings the cattle and kills them and if that fly kills human beings it may cause sleeping sickness so because of this they cannot or they do not keep cattle so in the absence of for example uh, these cattle you know that these cattle are useful bulls especially are useful in preparing the land for cultivation you know for plowing purposes 
so they had to plow it with their own hands it's an additional i mean additional job or you can say it makes their work harder even uh, than you know farmers in our country for example so but still they do it and they had to carry heavy loads and walk long distances so this is their village life i mean they probably have become used to it so they don't mind i mean walking long distances yeah and probably you'll find very very fast runners in africa you know you know most of these uh, you know usain bolt for example was also from africa so africa and african people i mean they they lead a hard life so it pays them off in a way that they are champions in in different races <clears throat> yeah but they can keep only uh, goats for milk and poultry for eggs okay well the, there's a picture shown of this african village in the book and there's a small note written this picture is not complete it can never be complete because african village is always changing and has already changed much the bush dwellers are being introduced to the modern facilities of transport and communications once the small villages are linked by road with towns and cities they will soon see bushes and car sorry buses and cars electricity and tube wells radios and television schools and hospitals coming to their villages and probably they these things these facilities have already been introduced to most of african villages i mean now there are road networks probably built around you know our villages electricity has reached with electricity internet computers and other modern technology communication ways have already been introduced in these bush uh, you know dwellings these villages and settlements so by now you know uh, this picture which we have read and which we have imagined throughout the lesson it has already changed you know quite a lot right uh, just like change is coming they say change is the only permanent thing in the world so change is coming just like any in any other part of the world so in african rural life you know villages also change has already come okay so if you want to get more information you can still watch some videos on african village nigerian villages and you can have a better insight and see how these villages have undergone a change in these times okay so probably one more word flow flow means to prepare land for cultivation to prepare land for cultivation now it is done through tractors you have already uh, read a chapter a visit about modern farming so no more animals are used but in formerly i mean olden times uh, bulls or some other cattle were used for plowing the land or for preparing it for cultivation but now more modern ways are being used you know for example threshers and uh you know tractors are used in modern farming well so this is with this we come to an end to our lesson we have uh, read and explained it you need to read it again so that you can understand it and these are the words probably you will find difficult um, and i have written the meanings okay then comprehension so if you have not done the question and answers so you can still uh, find the answers to these questions they are very simple questions for example question number 1 says how many independent countries are there in africa so we know in the first paragraph it is written the more than 35 countries independent countries in africa then where is nigeria we know uh, in the second paragraph it's mentioned that it's in the western part of africa then question number 3 say what sort of country is it means is nigeria so we know that it's it's, uh, it's an it's an agricultural country with uh, you know a great part of it is covered with dense forest which thins out into uh, bush in the north 
well, this is what we know. This kind of country is Nigeria. Then what is the bush area made up of? Well, it consists of scattered trees with heavy undergrowth in the form of thick bushes and grass. Well, question number five says, where do most Nigerian farmers live? Well, you know, they live in villages. Well, what is the roof of a farmer's hut made of? We know it is made up of a thick layer of, uh, of straw, grass, reeds, or palm leaves. Well, that's a simple answer. Then what is the center of activities? We know that courtyard is the center of activities. Women folk, they work and uh, cook food there and children play. Then what are their food crops? We know these crops are mentioned, plantains. Potatoes, yams, groundnuts, and pepper are their food crops. And what are their cash crops? We know two uh, crops are mentioned. Oil palms and cocoa beans are their cash crops. So who tend their uh, food crops? Well, we know women tend or look after their food crops. And who tend their cash crops? Men normally tend or look after their cash crops. Well, what is made from cocoa beans? We know that chocolate is made. It is, you know, ground or it is crushed, you know, and uh, it, is, it, it is used for making of chocolate. Well, then, uh, well, then exercise B, there are certain, uh, around 20 words, 20, 33 words are written. So you'll get it in your content, the words meaning. So you need to write all the words meaning and the question answers in your notebook. Now, exercise C. Find for each word in a list A, a word or phrase similar in meaning from list B. So this is about words and their synonyms, the words with same meaning. So the first word is courtyard and in section B, the word compound is equivalent or same as courtyard. The next word is link. Link is, the word is uh, join, right? Dense, dense we know, it means thick, the word is thick on, in list B. Uh, then explore, explore, you know, that means search. Introduce means to acquaint. For example, he introduced me to his friend or so he acquainted me or he introduced me, we can say. So acquaint means introduce. Then century, as it is written here, century is 100, 100. Then majority is more than half. And cultivate is to grow. And the last one is facility, which is a convenience. A convenience, for example, we have all these facilities, for example, electricity, computers, and in our you know, houses, there are different facilities available. Then exercise B says, find the list, find in list B words or phrases opposite in meaning to word in list A. So words and antonyms, for example. So a word dense, as we decided, dense means thick, so the opposite would be thin. And majority is more than half, so the opposite of majority is minority, which means less in number, okay, less in number. Then remote, this word is used in the text also, remote means far away. So we call it a remote control because you control it from a distance, far away, right. So the opposite of remote will be, yes, you guessed it right, near. Then independent yeah the one that does not depend on anyone so the opposite will be dependent and uh, interior you know the interior for example the inside of something so the opposite will be exterior the outer side of something and the last one is export which means to sell something you know to the outer other countries so import is when you buy from the other countries right that is export and import. Okay, so with this, uh, this is the end of this exercise. Then we have a small other exercise. You can read out this uh, 
three or four examples are given for this expression thin out so you just need to read and see how they have used this expression thin out okay and try to understand it then exercise e says fill in the blanks with shall will should and would so, so these are all used for future right so it's um, a little bit of grammar it is included in grammar so we know that will is used for uh, you know uh, future when you make a decision at the time of speaking so we use normally will or for making prediction shall is used in formal english right for future for example i shall be grateful if you grant me something if you write an application so formal writing we use shall would is uh, also used for making request and for some other purposes for future also should is used for advice if you want to uh, advise somebody so we also use uh, would so in the first one for example i think i dash go to karachi next week so at the time of speaking probably the speaker has made up his mind or he has intention of doing it in future so i think i'll go to i will go to karachi next week the second you dash not tell a lie it's a piece of advice so that's why we may use you should not tell lie another three <clears throat> we dash fight to the last man so it it shows determination we will fight to the last man then this office dash remain open till midnight so this office will remain open till midnight number 5 yeah here comes the formal expression i shall be grateful if you kindly grant me a pass well number 6 the train dash have arrived by now <clears throat> so it's like uh, deduction the train should have arrived should have arrived by now so we know should have be used for uh, past criticism so you know if you want to make a criticism we use should and have so the train should have arrived by now now number 7 it's uh, it's a peculiar or different usage of should dash our motherland need need it we dash lay our lives for it so should our motherland need it we would lay down our lives for it so in the first blank comes should and the second blank comes would well the next one is also a piece of advice so we say we you should respect your elders and the next one have you been there it would never have happened this is a conditional sentence had you been there it would never have happened and the last one they it's again again an advice so they should not violate any conditions of this contract so you need to copy this exercise uh, these ex this exercise yeah in your notebook then uh there is an exercise on prepositions so let's do it fill in the blanks with the appropriate prepositions please introduce me dash your father so introduce me to your father he is not acquainted dash my parents so he is not acquainted with my parents this machine is fitted dash an automatic control this machine is fitted with an automatic control number 4 you are not fit dash this job you are not fit for this job a round nail does not fit dash a square hole it does not fit into a square hole then number 6 he has passed the examination and is now looking dash a job looking for so look for means to search so he is searching for a job he is looking for a job 
the police are on the lookout for the robbers so to be on a lookout means they are you know they are after the robbers they want to catch them so they are on the lookout for the robbers number 8 look up the meaning of this word in the dictionary normally we use the word ex, you know this phrasal verb look up for searching the meaning in 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 any dictionary so and the next one he promised to look into this matter so look into this matter means uh, to see what are the possibilities to solve it so look into this matter and the last one we look up to you to solve our problem problems so up look up to someone means to expect you know some from some someone so it means we expect that you are going to solve this problem so this could be say said like this we look up to you to solve our problems all right so you need to write these two exercises this is going to be your homework do exercises e exercises e well a b yeah and c also well c is about the changing into passive which you have already done you have practiced it for example a road links his village to the town so you need to see the verb which is link and it is in present so you will use present present tense verb and you need to find the object of the of the verb so his village is linked to the town by a road number 2 a snake in the grass stung his bare foot so we know bare his bare foot is the object so we'll start our sentence passive with this his bare foot was stung by a snake in the grass okay his bare foot was stung by a snake in the grass he cannot rear any cattle on his farm so any cannot any any cattle any can any cattle cannot be reared on his farm right any cattle cannot be reared on his farm and the next one the father settled the dispute between the brothers so the the the, the dispute was settled between the brothers by their fathers and then change the following into active voice so the lamp was lit by the servant so who lit it the servant so we'll say the servant lit the lamp then the soldier was ordered by the officer to report to him so who ordered actually we'll start our sentence with that the officer ordered the soldier to report to him and the next one by whom was this blanket patched all right so by whom will change into who for active sentence so we'll say who patched this blanket and question number 4 was this land cultivated by the land owner himself so this is again a question and it is in past simple so we'll we'll start our our uh, sentence with did so we'll say did the land owner cultivate this land himself right so this also exercise c and d you will also write in your notebooks then composition well there are three so one will be given to you in the form of an assignment okay uh, then there are you know four idioms given you know to shed the crocodile's tear to weep uh, insincerely or hypocritically so when somebody is just weeping 
you know, without sincerity and just to show off or pretending to weep. So we say the, these are not the real tears, they are crocodile's tears. Then to feel like a fish out of water, this is another idiomatic expression. It means uh, to feel out of place. For example, if you go to some place and you don't feel, you know, the same as other people are feeling, so it means you are like a fish out of water. To nip in the bud, to stop an evil in the early stages. Well, to when you stop any evil in the early stages, so you say you nip it in the in the bud. All right. So it's better, you know, bad behavior, for example, in children must be nipped in the bud. Means they should it should be stopped right from the very beginning. And then for last one to turn over a new leaf, to reform or to behave better. So if for example, uh, if there are some, uh, there are people, you know, who want to leave their old lifestyle of bad behavior or, you know, their criminal record, for example, they want to clear it off and they want to start a new life as a good person. So we say that they have turned a new leaf of their life, right? So you can study these, uh, these examples and understand the meaning and do the exercises in which you have to replace the, the words with these, uh, these idioms so that you can, you can learn how to use in your daily life. All right? So with this, we, we have come to an end to our lesson today. If you still have any problem, you can come to school and uh, discuss with me if there is any problem all right but the key is uh, that you read it again you uh, you know you read the text understand it and then do all the exercises i hope you will not have any problem so this is your homework you need to do the exercise you know this exercise e has these parts a b c and d so these four parts are your homework uh, the comprehension questions probably you have already done. If you have not done that you also have to you have to do. Alright. So with this we come to an end. I hope you are having a good time. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.